Hi guys, it's Michelle. Today I'm going to show you how to make this wreath that's pictured here and how to make a decoupage pumpkin. I'm going to show you how to make this spooktacular wreath. I put the link down below in the description box so you can see where I got my inspiration for this. I got this foam wreath at the Dollar Tree and it says it's 9.8 inches or 24 centimeters. Then I got a roll of this crepe streamer and I got this at Hobby Lobby for a dollar. And this is 175 feet of streamer. So this should be plenty. Now, unlike the picture, I picked this out and I'm going to put this on the wreath and see how it looks. If I like the way it looks, I'll keep it on. If I don't, I won't. But this was 40% off, so instead of $1.49, it was like 89 cents. I cut the streamer to a bunch of four inch long pieces. And then I have <laughs> this good old Celestial Seasonings tea tin that I got years ago with some push pins or with some pins in there. You can use push pins. I just thought these would be easier to use. I feel like push pins are a little bit too far um, in diameter compared to these. It feels like they'd leave too big of a hole on, on this. I figure up here where the seam is, that'll be the top of the wreath and this will be the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these in half and then I'm going to pin them to the wreath. The way they said to do it on the link didn't quite make sense to me, so I might not really be following the link exactly, but we'll get it done. I think what I have found works the best is to start here and then go here and then do here, but then do another one on the outside in the middle before I do the next inside one. I'm putting this flush with the table and then going in and pinning it right towards, sorry, I'm going to keep sticking my finger here, right towards where the table meets the edge. That way when it's on a door or a wall, it doesn't sit on there all funny. And I'm not worried about using too many pins or anything like that. I've had these pins lying around for gosh, a long, long time. I really don't see any reason why I have to hold on to all of them. You know, it's like sometimes with these kind of things, I sometimes I feel like I shouldn't use things, you know, I want to save them for if I need them in the future, but then you never need them. And then you think, I've been saving these all these years for no apparent reason. So one, then I'm going to do two on the outside. Three in the middle. We'll do both sides so it kind of secures it. So securing it on this side secures this over here and then doing it on the other side right here secures this one on the inside as well okay so that was one two three so then I'm gonna do four five And I'm just going to keep doing that. One, two, three, 
four, five, and then again, and then again, and again, until I get all the way around to the bottom. I've gone all the way around. This is the bottom of the wreath. It's actually, you know what I just, I found out after I'd been going for a while that where I started had to be where I ended, which should be the bottom. I've got a piece of the streamer that's maybe a little over a foot long. So I'm just going to bring this up through here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom of it and pin it. I'll pin it in two places just to kind of make sure that it's sturdy on there. And then I'm going to pin the top layer. Let's see. Now for this, I'm going to try to find some black ones so that they kind of meld into everything. I'm going to make them a little bit, make it a little bit loose. I think I'll do a third one on here. Just I like odd numbers on things. I just think it looks nicer. And then I'm just gonna kind of fluff it up here. Then, as far as this pumpkin goes, I was thinking it could sit right there, which I think is really cute. I'm gonna do a bit of a long piece on here. So with these, if you roll the scissors around like this, it breaks up the plastic. Then, because there's wire in there, all you have to do is fold it and it breaks right off. Here's where I was trying to puncture this. What if I were to take a pen and puncture in there and make the hole a little bit bigger? Do you think it would stick down in there then? Let's try it. Yep, stick a pin in there and wiggle it around a little bit. Okay, and then as far as the bottom goes, all that you have to do is fold this in half. Now don't crease it and then cut. There you go. And we'll do it on the other side. I did it over here, but it had kind of a weird curved look to it that I didn't really care for. So let's try it again. Let's try it again. If your new kids on the block fan, you'll appreciate what I just did. <laughs> oh, that didn't look good either. Okay. Let's try it again here. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go hang this up, and I will show you what it looks like. And here's what it looks like all done and hung up. 
you can get really versatile with this wreath. You can do it in any color that you want. You can mix and match colors. You can put something other than a pumpkin on there. You could use it for just about any holiday you want or just you could do something neutral that's up all year long. Up next is the candy wrapper decoupage pumpkin. And you can use candy wrappers or if you want, you could use some of the tissue that you have left over from the wreath. You can get creative with it. You want to put down some newspaper. I went to Hobby Lobby and I got one of these pumpkins here. It's a paper mache pumpkin. Here's the sticker on it in case you need the skew. It says $9.99. However, these were 40% off when I went in there, so I got mine for $5.99. Then what you need is some Mod Podge and a pack of these. Now obviously you just use one of them. But I like the smaller size of these. But if you like the bigger ones, you can use the bigger ones too. It's not too big of a deal really. This is the kind of candy that I got. You know these big packs of just random candy. I took the Tootsie Roll wrappers, the Fruit Chew wrappers, but just the ones that are in your more fall kind of colors, and some Tootsie Pop wrappers. I laid these all out flat. I took the candy, oh, obviously I took the candy out. I laid them out flat, and I put a book over all of these overnight to help flatten them out. And I just put the candy in Ziploc bags. And I'm going to start with the bottom and then I'll let it dry and then I'll do the sides and the top. So when there's a little dent in the pumpkin, I just tear a little bit of this to make it nice again. And be prepared, you're gonna get Mod Podge all over your hands. So if you, I've got a little rag here that I like to use. And um, you know, if you are worried about your jewelry or anything, make sure that you take it off. And then I put it over the top in a nice thick layer, not quite this thick, but you'll, you'll see where we're going with it here. So if it starts to come up like that, I just put some under the bottom and then flip it back over.
Okay, I am back. It's been quite a while since we last saw each other. So I finished the bottom. I also went ahead and worked on the sides, which I think are really cute the way they came out. And then now I'm going to work on the top. I'm not mad at you. I wasn't trying to avoid you. I just felt like it gets a little repetitive with such a big item. Decoupaging it. Oh, also, I don't have my wedding ring on right now. I didn't suddenly get a divorce. I'm still very happily married. But uh, the Mod Podge was getting dangerously close to my ring. And I'm not trying to ruin my, my ring. So, all right. I am going to turn on. I've been watching YouTube all day. Not the channel you're watching right now. Not that um, I don't like myself, but I don't really like watching myself. I don't know what that is, but I just don't. So I've been watching, obviously, other people's pages and loving it. And now I am. it's nighttime and I'm watching Live PD, which is so exciting. I love Live PD. Do you watch it? Tell me if you do. Now, I do want to tell you that you don't normally do this thick of a coat, but because we're talking about wax paper here, I feel like I've had to do a much thicker coat than I would if it was normal paper or um, especially if it was tissue or something like that. It's just this stuff is intense. <laughs> A little more hardcore. I feel like I'm having to do a lot more, quite a bit more thickness than I would normally have to do. My hands are so gross right now. It's like nauseating. But that's okay, right? It's just all part of the fun, I guess. Oh, I like this. It's so cute. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's looking cute. I can't wait to rip all this Mod Podge off my fingers, but before I do, instead of a line, I like blotting, basically. Because it kind of adds more dimension to it, I feel like. You don't have to listen if you don't like that look. Don't do it. I'm just telling you what I like. And, um, you know, what, what I think kind of looks the best, especially if you're going to do Mod Podge like this on something like this that isn't real smooth looking anyway because it's a pumpkin. Um, I feel like over time 
it will look good longer. And I also feel like with it being Halloween and kind of like spooky and everything's kind of off kilter, I kind of like the thought of things not looking smooth. We're done. I'm going to let this dry and I will show you what this looks like when it's dry. I'll, I'll show you tomorrow when it's light out. It's already dark. I've been working on this for kind of a while. It's like I've been working on it and then letting it dry and then working on it again and letting it dry again. You know that whole drill. Here it is, the finished product. Oh, and here's the bottom that we did together. Happy Halloween. <laughs>